everybody, unless of course you're watching this video in the evening, in that case good evening, and you are watching Time Travel TV, and today we're going to be talking about Scott of the Antarctic. Now, most of you probably either have one of two views about Scott of Antarctic, well actually three. The first one is you never heard of him, which um, you will do soon. The second one is that he was an absolute hero, pioneer, adventurer, or that he was a foolhardy, bumbling idiot. Maybe a bit like this. Now, the object of this year's expedition is to see if we can find any trace of last year's expedition. Well, sir, I'm a fully qualified mountaineer. Mountaineer? Uh... Mouse, moon, mountaineer. Two men skilled at climbing a mountain. Ah, oh, that'd be useful. Well, you're in. So Captain Robert Falcon Scott, better known as Scott of the Antarctic, uh, was best known for leading the 1912 British expedition to be the first men to the South Pole. May I add, the unsuccessful expedition. They did manage to reach the South Pole, but not first. Anyway, so he'd made detailed weather plans of the weather in the Antarctic, so he knew exactly when to travel. His plan was to travel during the peak of their summertime. Uh, so that uh, gave him plenty of time to get there and back before winter set in. So the plan was that he'd go half the way on ponies, yes, you heard me right, ponies, and shoot them uh, halfway. Uh, and then uh, use uh, the rest of the way to push the sledges, or pull the sledges, push or pull, uh, doesn't really matter, or using brute strength. Now, uh, this plan seems a bit silly to us today, why doesn't he use skis and dogs? Well, that's because he'd never, he had no experience with them. It was much better idea to go with what he knew. Uh, and the trip in total was around 800 miles. Uh, he thought this was a good idea, Shackleton made the same journey in 1909 and got very close to the South Pole. So that's what he decided to do. But he wasn't alone. Norwegian Roald Amundsen ha had the same idea of going to the South Pole at the same time, using skis and dogs. His route he was taking was a bit little shorter, around 740 miles. Uh, except it was untested, they had no idea what was there, so he could have fell down a massive crevasse and died, which would be very sad. Not for uh, Captain Scott, I'm sure he wouldn't have minded so much if uh, Roald Lamington never got there, but he was a very gentlemanly man, Mr Scott, so I'm sure he wouldn't have wanted him to die much. <laughs> anyway, so when Captain Scott and his uh, uh, five uh, uh, crew members got to the pole, he realised that he was beaten by around five weeks. There was a Norwegian flag there, and they were the second people there. They'd been beaten by five weeks in total. In, they arrived there in about January 1912. So they weren't particularly happy. All their dreams had been dashed, and now was time for the long, arduous journey back, which would be quite demoralising, because they are quite demoralised already, because they weren't the first. So anyway, what happened was, is that they'd allowed plenty of time to cross the Ross Ice Shelf at the end, except little did Captain Scott know that 1912 would be an anomaly. Although he'd made detailed weather plans, which were very accurate, even by modern day standards, 1912 was a once in every 15 year anomaly and temperatures plummeted far sooner. The first die was Evans, who uh, died uh, just at the beginning of the Ross Ice Shelf. Then was Captain Oates, who'd had quite a few injuries along the way, and eventually decided to sacrifice himself, realising he was holding the rest of the crew up. And in fact, it was late at night, he opened the door to the tent and said, I'm just going outside for a while, I may be some time, and he was never seen again. So the rest of them all died when they were caught in a snowstorm in their tent and they couldn't make it to their first supply depot where they could have got to safety. It was only 11 miles away. And eight months later, uh, a search party went out to look for them and they managed to find them fairly quickly because they're only 11 miles away. 
And, well, uh, they found three bodies in the tent, plus photographs in their journals, which is why we know all of this. So what do you think? Was he a foolhardy adventurer or was he a hero? In my opinion, he was definitely not a foolhardy adventurer because, well, it should have worked, the plan. I mean, granted, he probably wouldn't have been the first because Roald Amundsen probably would have been there first anyway, but he should have survived. The whole crew should have survived. But 1912 was a very anomalous year. So I thought to myself, in the 21st century, polar exploring should be easy because we've come on like over a hundred years. So when it snowed the other day, I thought to myself, I will go polar exploring. So I made myself some skis. Now, I know these are much shorter than you may be uh, used to seeing on the Winter Olympics, but I thought, well, shorter is better because, well, you know, you know, yeah, I, I didn't have enough wood to make long ones, actually. So I decided to go polar exploring and this is what happened. Yes, so peril exploring is not an easy thing to do. In fact, any sort of exploring into the unknown is definitely not an easy thing to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to Time Travel TV. And I'll see you next time. Cheerio!